Okay, so here is a pretty sweet looking Gretsch. When I was working on the setup, I got to the point of intonation and every single note was sharp. So the bridge was definitely in the wrong place, even with the saddles backed up all the way towards the Bigsby. So I am in the process now of pinning the bridge. What I've done is raise the height adjustment posts all the way out of the body because that's actually how these bridges are pinned and that allowed me to slide the bridge forward and backwards until with what looks to me like a good saddle orientation I can get good intonation. The problem I run into is as you can see here at the base of the bridge foot there's a little lump in the paint and that is where the bridge was threaded into the body. If I scoot this bridge to the point where I feel like my intonation is fantastic, I actually expose the original mounting holes on both sides. So what I've had to do to make this job reasonable and cost effective is just place it where I can cover the holes mostly no one's gonna notice and now I'm gonna tape the bridge base in place and do some quick pinning okay so I removed the pick guard to make this easier on myself and I've got the bridge where I want it. It intonates well. I've actually done the whole setup action-wise at this point to make sure that I will have good intonation with the string height I want and the string gauge that I want. I've got my bridge positioned where it lines up well on the fretboard. The spacing from the nut down to the end of the fretboard is pretty consistent. This one I'm keeping the uh, base string a little bit in from the edge because it's it's noticeably in at the edge down by the nut so I'm trying to just make this as consistent feel wise all the way down the neck and still have it reasonably lined up with pull pieces they don't always go great as far as that goes on the pickups. So I've got this taped in place, everything's adjusted the way I want it, and I'm going to loosen the strings and get uh, get some holes drilled in this guy. Alright, so this job is one where cost is a concern. It's not a super expensive guitar and you want to get it out fast. So the optimal way to do this would be to remove these, use that as a template, drill the hole, tap the hole, screw these back in. And uh, that would be more time consuming and I don't even have the right tap for these. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and drill just next to these so the height adjuster uh, nuts will cover the pins. I'm just going to go through with a 16th inch drill bit and then I'm going to use my cutoff wheel on my Dremel to cut small sections of a 16th inch drill bit because they're super cheap and use those as my pins. They'll be hidden and there's no getting around the fact that we're modifying a guitar. It's no longer original. Anything you do is changing the guitar. So in a situation where cost is of concern and we want to be timely, it's always important to uh, you know, pick whatever route you think is best and go for it. So I've got here 16th inch drill bit. I'm going to be using these as a reference point for being relatively square to the top on here when I'm drilling. 
and uh, here we go. Number two. Now I got myself a little index pin two of them. It's worth kind of cleaning the burrs off of these after you cut them. It's either going to be you or someone else, but someone's got a chance of getting cut. Injuries in the shop should be kept to a minimum. Alright, look, we're back over here. So I'm just going to lightly tap these pins in and there's what those pins look like when they're installed just little tiny guys and they'll be covered by the height adjusters and the bridge so I'll go ahead and cut the height adjuster posts real quick here and string it back up and finish my setup. So a lot of people complain about stringing up Bigsby's saying it's super hard. It's actually not. You'll be fine. And I wanted to show how I deal with that. So when I string up Bigsby's I will grab the ball end of the string flat side so it's easy to hold and then I'll just put a little curve into the string then I can come down here put it under the back there put that on the pin and it's ready to go the other thing I really find helpful on Bixby's is stringing the first and sixth strings before you proceed to the other ones because then you can kind of even the tension on the tailpiece and make sure it's straight. Alright, so I just strung this up. Check to see that it's in tune. And I have not touched the bridge. So we're just going to see if it stayed in place. I'm looking at my strobe tuner. That is right on. That is right on. So that's how you can make a guitar like this that has a bridge in the wrong spot end up with a bridge that's in the right spot and play in tune and you know like I mentioned earlier it's important to consider like this guitar is probably never gonna be a um, super valuable collector instrument or anything like that this is a guitar that's gonna be owned by players and it's important for a guitar player to have a well-playing guitar and when cost is a concern times a concern just do it make it look good and make it functional. And 
and uh, hopefully some of you players also found this useful because um, I did a lot of my own work, or I attempted a lot of my own work before I, you know, went to school and did my apprenticeship and everything. And I wish I would have had a couple tips. Um, anyways, absolutely gorgeous guitar in my opinion. And now it plays in tune. This is like a younger me's dream guitar. This thing is so rad. I know that some of you probably remember the Epiphone uh, Swingster and Wildcat videos that I did. Um, this is in that vein. I might even like this more. Hope you're all having a beautiful day.